Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Many of you may be listening to me as you're preparing for church or um, maybe preparing breakfast for the family, but hopefully you're in a space where you can hear me. I wanted to come on and talk to those of you who have um, a level of expertise or um, they call it a hustle or a hobby that you're really interested in turning into uh, consistent revenue, consistent income to add, maybe add on to your current family income if you're two household or single mom. Um, I've been getting several individuals, I actually worked with individuals last year for an entire year on uh, you know, being able to transition from their job to turning their business, their expertise into um, their, their, a stream of revenue. And I want to talk to you about that on today. I kind of want to walk you through my transition and how that went for me and some of the things that I had to do and had to have in place. And then I want to speak to you on uh, some things that you can do. And, you know, one of the things I want to do is talk about the mindset that you're going to need, but I'm going to talk about some practical things as well. So if you own a side, if you have a side hustle that, you know, you've been earning a little coin from it here, there, you do every now and then a few times, you know, out of the year, you may get an opportunity to earn some revenue from that, or maybe you've been doing it kind of regular, but not getting the traction that you desire to get in your business, this is going to be for you. If you know someone who is in that position, maybe they're working a job and they have a level of expertise that they want to monetize, um, share it on their tag timeline, tag them. Hey, Andrea, how are you, dear? Tag them so that they can get the information. I'm going to take a moment to uh, share the broadcast out and I ask that you guys do the same. A couple things I want to ask while you're on getting this great information. If I say something that helps your business or your life at any point throughout the broadcast, just tap the screen for hearts. Show me a little love. Or um, share the broadcast out because like it's good and you want somebody else to get the information. Maybe you know a person in particular who has been kind of twiddling around with their expertise, but not to the point where they feel comfortable about excuse me, it being an added, excuse me, just a moment. Revenue stream for them, if you could share, that would be great. And then I'll do an introduction so that you guys, um, you'll know like, who's this lady? What is she talking about? And how does she qualify to talk to me about turning my side hustle slash hobby into a business. So I am Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am a growth strategist, a business coach and mentor to women service-based business owners who want to brand build and profit in their business and in their life. I have been an entrepreneur for 28, maybe 29 years now. Um, I owned a brick and mortar service-based business for 10 years where I employed up to 12 staff members at a time. Um, and I now consult full-time helping women just like you do the same thing, uh, run a successful business. Uh, my focus is from a three-point perspective, so I focus on abundance mindset, personal growth, and business building. They are the perfect three, and if you follow me, you'll notice a lot of things kind of come to me in threes. So um, I have an academy called 3D Success. It's about uh, it's on three core principles, destiny, dollars, and discipline. Um, even my logo and everything for my previous service-based business <coughs> um, was done in threes for whatever reason, the number three. It's really good for me, but abundance mindset, personal growth, and business building, I feel they are the perfect three, and they are definitely three thing, three principal things that you need in your entrepreneurial journey. I feel that um, entrepreneurship is one of the most noble things um, that you can do in, in growing your business, and I'm trying to find this on my page here. Jaden, can you do me a favor, dear? Hello. 
Can you get uh, mommy some tissue? Hold on one second, guys. <coughs> so we've been having, thank you guys for waiting a moment. We've been having extremely cold weather in our area and I need some tea, honey, and ginger. And I found this so I, I can share this out. Well, I see it, but it's not. Okay. Um, great day, Andrea. How are you? I see your comment in the bottom. You guys be patient with me. I'm sharing this out. It would be amazing if you would do the same for me. One, I want to speak to entrepreneurship. I truly believe in entrepreneurship for a number of reasons. One, entrepreneurship allows you to erase the income cap. So when you work a job, you you know, whether you're getting paid by salary or you're being paid by the hour, there is a limited amount of money that you make when you work a job. It, it just is. And I believe, I, one of the reasons I believe in entrepreneurship is because it allows you to erase that income cap. And the amount of uh, money and that you earn as a business owner or an entrepreneur is specifically, you know, limited only by you. So that's the only income cap that you have. So you can decide to, you know, grow your level of expertise, increase your audience, you know, uh, create premium services and increase your income. <clears throat> Number two, and I'm trying to get through this. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the, the perfume that I put on. I think that's it now that I think about it. Number two. Um, it allows you time freedom. So one of the things that I find, and, and guys, you'll if you if this is your first time, put first timer in the comments too. It'll kind of let me know how much of explaining, you know, my background I, I really need to do. And then I'd love to know what type of business you have or what business idea do you have that you're wanting to monetize. But one of the things that's important to me, so one of my top five values is family. And I find that Oftentimes, you know, having to work, you know, these specific 8, 10, 12 hours um, limits us from being able to do some of the things that are super valuable to us, especially if you're a mom and you're wanting to attend events with your children or, you know, maybe your baby's just not feeling well or you're not feeling well and having to, you know, get permission to be able to get self-care and rest and time and things like that. So I believe in entrepreneurship as well because of the time freedom that it allows in your life and your business. And thirdly, um, God has given us the ability to create. And I believe that business is, is one of the ways that we're able to create. There's a scripture that says, um, do business until I come, right? And so I completely and fully believe in entrepreneurship and owning a business. I also know that um, jobs aren't necessarily secure anymore. And, you know, you could be here today and gone tomorrow. So the ability, if nothing else, to be able to create and earn revenue when you need to, I think it's an important skill set to have. Um, and I think it's an important space to be able to put you and, and your family in. For me, when I think about it, I think about it as another level of um, support, you know, for, for my family. Another way of me being able to, because nothing is 100%, but just able to um, own a business and create my own income and revenue, it, there's an amazing sense you know, that comes along with that. So maybe you have a job and you're wanting to, some people don't necessarily want to transition into full-time entrepreneurship, but you want to be able to say, I can create thirty to $40,000 worth of income in addition to the income that we have in our family now. To be able to say that for many of you, it would change a lot of things about how your life and, you know, your business is going and flowing. And so I want to give you some insight on, you know, what that process looks like. I finally got to a page that I can share. Uh, just a moment, guys.
So for me, I was sharing with you guys that I've been an entrepreneur for 28, 29, going on 30 years now. And, you know, during my entrepreneurship, I started out in a service industry. So I was doing a service on a client, client per client. Um, I started with working for a company where I was commissioned. And then I later, um, you know, rented a space to be able to provide the service. And then I moved into being a business owner instead of just self-employed, where I employed other people to duplicate some of the services that I did um, in order to earn more revenue. And at that point, I might have been about 17 years into my 17, 18 years into my entrepreneurial journey at that time. And I saw a space where my expertise could be monetized. Now, a few things that happened to me along my career path that you guys may not have thought about because I find that there are a lot of corporate women, there are a lot of people who work jobs, who have skill sets and levels of expertise that they just don't know, you know has the ability to be monetized or they don't know how to, to monetize it. So a few things that happened for me like early in my entrepreneurial journey, um, just providing a service to other people was um, I was given the opportunity to teach, coach, train, and educate. At the time, it was, you know, fairly early in my career in what I was doing. So I didn't really think about the teaching, coaching, and training that I was I started in the the beauty industry is where I started as far as my skill set is concerned. But the company that I worked for when I very first started out um, asked me to go to, so I went to community colleges and taught. I went to, I did trade shows and conferences where, you know, I was on stage in front of tons of people teaching technique and product knowledge. Um, within that specific industry, but I didn't understand that what I was doing was also this monetizable thing. Well, at least not enough to be able to turn it into revenue that could sustain my family. So I go along, I um, end up, you know, progressing in my career and that led to me becoming a business owner where I hired other people. In my local community, I ended up kind of organically and I say organically because it it was something that was just happening in in my career and I don't want, I don't mean just happening like um it was happening on purpose but I wasn't necessarily set out to do those things it's just that I continued to grow in my skill set in my um ability to be a business owner and people in the community started reaching out to me for help in their business. So I started doing things, although my industry was completely different, um, they weren't looking at the actual thing that I did. They, was, they were looking at my skill set as a business owner. So I started doing having opportunities like I taught a seed grant program for the Chamber of Commerce uh, to a group of budding entrepreneurs. And I was chosen out of several people in my local community. I um, I did some things for the Minority Roundtable in our area, which was tons of different um, industries who had businesses. Um, I was helping them. And then I had single individual businesses in the community to ask me to help them with their business. So I started out consulting with a varied number of industries contacting me with their business. But when it was time for me to come online with my business, because one of the things that may be a problem for you in creating your more revenue or more income from your side hustle is you're not in front of, you know, enough people and definitely, you know, not in front of the right people because I don't believe in just getting in front of um, tons of audiences and then nobody's converting into a customer. Like, it makes no sense. So one of the things I share with you guys that I help people do is find brand clarity. So we discover what their brand DNA is, and I'll talk more about that. And getting really clear on who they are as a brand and who's going to find them valuable so that they can be positioned in front of those people because it just happens faster if you're in front of, 
you know, the, the right people. So that's kind of how my uh, journey actually went. And then I did a, um, I hosted a training in my local community. Uh, a videographer who I built a relationship with recorded me, placed it on social media. And I do believe that social media is a great avenue for those of you who are looking to gain more exposure and awareness for your business. And I teach those um, concepts because, you know, it's so many people on social media. How do you build those connections and how do you have a clear message that speaks to, you know, your ideal customer? So those are some of the things that I teach inside my 3D Success Academy. But the video that the videographer put online, you know, I have probably about 40,000 views on that particular video. It was actually a pivotal turning point for me because my audience began to find me. They began to almost create <clears throat> what it was that, that I was going to do and what I'm actually doing now. So that video probably has close to 40,000 views, but at that time, um, you know, maybe it was in the thousands, but it was it was just like going really, really fast. And I had, you know, business owners from all around the world literally connecting with me to help them with their business. And then I start, you know, moving into the space of awareness. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. You know, I got something here. I was teaching something within the industry that I was in, but they saw the concepts as business principles. It was also a space and time when I recognized that there were just simply some things that I was doing that produced profit um, in, in any business. You know, there were just principles that I was using that worked across the board. So for you, you probably have a skill set or a level of expertise that is monetizable, that you can turn into a stream of revenue. I had a recent client who... You know, we figured out she did a brand clarity call with me and um, no, she did a re renew strategy session with me. And one of the things that Jay. One second, my OK, I don't know, it must be a short in that or something, the lighting. And one of the things that we recognized or I helped her to recognize was what her superpowers were. And she was like, I, I would have never chosen that because it was something that she just did naturally. We created a strategy. And um, she's actually in corporate, but she has a level of expertise that's easily monetizable that we've created a strategy. And um, it will be a revenue income earning um, opportunity for her. So I want to share first, if you don't know, uh, mindset is really, really huge to me. So I want to share first some of the um, the thinking behind you know, becoming an entrepreneur, because a lot of what may be holding you back from really going forth may be fear. So one of the things that you definitely have to do is have a made up mind, because it, it, what happens when you have a level of security from a job that, that you already have, let me make sure this is, um, okay, from a job that you currently have, you kind of take the um, the side hustle for granted. So you never really get serious about it because you know you got this income back here and it's not this big thing. But if you're ever wanting it to you know begin to flow and have a measure of momentum and continue to create continuous income for you, you have to make up a you have to make a commitment. You got to make up your entire mind about you know the fact that this is something that you're going to take serious and you really want it to create either another stream of revenue for you. So I don't tell people to go quit their jobs. Now for me, um, although I was still self-employed, the position that I was playing when I closed my brick and mortar service-based business was a job. So even if you're self-employed, but you earn revenue based on whether or not you do a client, so you, you don't, you're not earning revenue if you're not doing a client, then you still have a job for yourself. I wasn't in a position where I had money and revenue coming in even when I wasn't like working on and speaking with a client. So I don't all I don't suggest you jump and just quit your job. Right. However, um, for me, I knew that my business that I have now was something that I completely and fully wanted to transition into. So whichever space that you're in, you can take the information that I share with you and apply it to yourself. You can put yourself in to the position. But one of the first things is to make up your mind that this is no longer going to be something that you just get a little extra money here or there for. Because what happens is you go in and out of actually 
the business and out of sight, out of mind. So it's almost like you got to get all this momentum up all over again to get going and get started instead of it being a continuous flow and something that actually produces revenue for you on a regular basis, you know, mindset. You got to get back in gear. And then the people that are accustomed to seeing you, maybe you'll come out with something that you're going to sell or an event or something that you're going to host and you only do it every now and then, they got to get to know who you are all over again. And so out of sight, out of mind, remember that, out of sight, out of mind. So you're going to need to make up your mind first. And then second of all, um, you need a plan. You need a plan. Hey, Sonia, how are you? Good morning, dear. So, yes, it's been quite some time, Sonia. So the second thing that you'll need to do is um, set some dates. So one of the things I did, I made up my whole mind. I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to support my family. It's viable. People are contacting me and paying uh, for the services. And it's going to allow me to, you know, even open up my revenue the cap that I felt like my was on my earning potential as well as increase my time freedom. So I made up my mind and then you got to have a plan. That meant looking at, you know, what I had, what I was responsible for and making a decision about how much money my income, my new business needed to earn in order for me to at least feel comfortable while I was building and growing it. So you are going to need to, you know, sit down and look at like, you know, what are my finances? And I know that um, that should be a given, but guys, you would be surprised the number of people who don't know what it really takes to run their household uh, and their life each and every month. You know, don't feel bad if, if that's a space that you're in, because sometimes we're just making the money and paying the bills. I hear that from a lot of people, but when you're wanting to you know, turn your side hustle into a business, one of the smartest things that you can do is figure out what your current expenses are, what it's taking for you and your family to live, and then let that be a measurement for how you want to grow your side hustle. Because what happens is now you begin to create goals, right? You, you begin to say, okay, I need to earn this amount. I need to do this many clients. I need to um, sell this many products or whatever in order to meet that goal. So I just got really, really sick and I transitioned. So I was able to close my business, bring my business online because it was completely and fully um, just, you know, locally in my community and the surrounding areas prior to being online. And it was also added revenue. So it wasn't even something that I, I was taking serious enough to really make it what it is now. So remember I said you got to get serious, you got to make up your mind and then you need a plan. And I tra I was able to transition and meet my uh income that I had in about a two and a half year time frame. So once you get serious everything changes. So what happened because I service so many different industries and helping them grow their business and helping them with productivity and things like that, customer service, all different types of things for organizations and businesses. When I came online, and you guys, let me know, you guys that are on, is it clear? Because, yeah, the internet here, let's see. Is it on? Is it clear? Somebody put in the comments whether or not I'm coming through. Clear. So one of the things that happened when I came online, and this is something, so some of you may be already doing your side hustle in your local community, and you're like, I know I need to get in front of more people and bring my business online. Now, when I came online, it was super important for me to get really clear about who it is that I was servicing, like who was my ideal customer, who's going to be ideal for the value of what I offer. And what happens for what happened for me is I do this uh, system called brand clarity and we look at what your brand DNA is. So when I dig deeper and further into who I am as a brand, I understand that a lot of the things that I have are very ideal for women, although they work for men as well, but they're very ideal for women. So that helps me to begin to like narrow down who it is that I serve. So you're going to need to decide because most you know, ambitious 
um, successful women like yourself have so many things that you're really good at. I mean, raise your hand if, if you have like several things um, that you're good at. So I thought I had um, disconnected this. Huh. Give me one second over here, guys. Okay. So it may come through a, a little better now, I hope, because the Wi-Fi on the other one was still hooked up. And I live in the boonies, guys, so I got the highest connection they could possibly get um, in the area. So one of the things that's going to be important is you deciding what it is that you're really, really good at and picking the lane. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do other things in your business. You can't offer other services in your business um, and, and what you do. But if you want to get the income quicker, sooner, faster, I suggest that you get clear on what that thing is that you really want to be known for, at least in a season. Because listen, we can always evolve, grow, reinvent. It's something I do with my clients. You know, so they're, they've been at a phase in their business for quite some time and they're ready to reinvent reinvent and rebrand themselves so that they can get in front of new ideal customers. I mean, you can do that. But if you're if your goal in the initial beginning is to replace the income or at least match, let's say match the income that you currently have so that you have a sense of, you know, security about what you're doing, then I suggest picking a lane. So for me, I went back to the actual skill set that I started out with first, and then I did a 360, and so now I help several different businesses again with their business. So you're going to need a plan. You're going to have to pick one of those good things. I know that you're ambitious and smart and successful in what you're currently doing, but pick a lane and then find out who finds what it is that you're great at, valuable enough to give you the coin to give you money for. Um, the, the next thing that you'll need to be able to do is manage your time. So more than likely, there are not a lot of entrepreneurs just around you all the time, right? So your spouse, if you have a spouse or maybe your family members, they may work a job as well. And so, um, no, I'm, I'm going into two different things that I actually wanted to share. So we're talking about managing your time. So whoever is in your family or in your life needs to understand that you're going to be dedicating some of your time to actually growing this business because it does take time. So I spent about a year, guys, um, you know, taking courses and classes and... Um, being coached on consulting before I ever launched. I'm not saying that's the track that you have to go, but that was the track that I did. But immediately when my year was up, I I landed my first paying customer. And the amount that was paid to me for that one hour, you know, it would take me, well, really it would take me about a whole day to earn that, that revenue because I was still a business owner. But it's actually the amount that it would take most people to earn in a week right? Who, who work a, a regular job. And so I took a year to, and during that year now I was sharing and um, posting on social media and things of that nature um, and doing other things. But I, I did commit myself to a year before like fully going into a full on launch. So maybe you've already started yours, you're, you're past some of those stages. Uh, but I know that it took it would take me that much longer if I did not get help. So I probably had about three coaches during that year long time frame. And then I also have a mentor that's been in my life, you know, forever. So I was able to eat some of the, the learning curve up with people who already had the information. Um, and then after that, <clears throat> it took me about maybe six months. I was earning revenue, you know, in, in my new business online. And then about two years later, I was able to transition fully, you know, to replace my income. And so this is what I help people to do, to uh, figure out who they are as a brand, get clear, clear on their brand DNA. It's a, a tool that I use inside my 3D Success Academy so that they can... 
um, you know, transition into their side hustle. Here's a couple things, other things that we need to do. So we talked about um, having a commitment and then having a, a real plan. Like your plan is going to help you with your accountability, which is what most entrepreneurs lack because, and it's even harder sometimes, or some people find it more difficult because they already have another stream of revenue that is really their security blanket. So when you got that other stream of revenue, you don't always take the new thing that you're doing, you know, serious. So you need a strong level of commitment, a plan, Time management is going to be huge because there you've created these habits that don't include you working on your business. The difference in working on your business than working in your business. So when you're working on your business, you may be defining who your ideal customer is. That may be a task that you need to do. You may be having your website done. You may be creating content for your social media platforms. You may be making phone calls uh, for collaborations and connections. Those are things that you know, are working on your business. You may be looking at your income to see, okay, how, how, what kind of goal am I going to set based on the income that I need to earn? And if you don't, if you're accustomed to doing all your regular stuff, so maybe you watch TV, when you get home, you got your normal routine, managing your time is going to be super important because you also have the responsibilities of running another business. Now, for me, I always suggest that people, you know, are willing to commit an hour or two per day um, if they're wanting to fast track uh, turning their hobby and hustle into a business that they're committing a minimum of an hour or two per day to work on their business. It will fast track everything um, that you're doing. So managing your time, aware of your finances. We talked about that. Develop a process that is producing consistent income. Because guys, so many people have an inflated vision about how it's going to be in entrepreneurship, and I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, I told you it is the space where you can just move the ceiling off of your income cap that you normally have. But you also have to be realistic about um, the time that it's going to take in order to uh, create it and make sacrifices. And the more work you work on your business daily, the less time it takes to actually make it a consistent income. So you have to make the decision of I'm going to be serious with this and I'm going to commit to an hour or two every day to work on my business and not something that I just do sporadically. So developing a process that's producing consistent income, what does that look like? It looks like creating um, systems that you do every month, every week, quarterly that are bringing in revenue to the point where there's a momentum about the income that you're bringing in, the customers and clients that you're getting, whatever type of business that you're you're offering. Maybe you have a level of expertise from the corporate job that you even had. But I suggest developing a process that you can follow through um, and produce consistent revenue before you actually make the transition. So I'm also I'm the founder of uh, an academy called 3D Success Academy, and it's founded on three uh, pillars: destiny, dollars, and disciplines. And it's for women in business. And this particular program is for those who are in the C stage of their business, who have a side hustle that they want to, you know, turn into a business and gain consistent revenue. So we go through all of the strategies and steps that you'll need to produce that process where you're getting consistent revenue, you know, in your business. So I suggest developing a process that's producing some consistent income. So if you've been earning some revenue, then what is the process that you're going to use to continue to repeat that so that you can get repeat results uh, as, as it relates to your income, to your money, right? Um, surround yourself with other people who are doing the same thing. And this is kind of where I was interjecting the managing your time with earlier because most of you aren't around entrepreneurs. If you're married, your spouse might not be an entrepreneur um, or no one in your family may be an entrepreneur. You may be the first person stepping out into entrepreneurship. So a lot of the things that you share with them, they're just gonna, they're not going to get it, right? Because 
oftentimes they're going to speak to you from a space of fear because they don't see the security in what it is that you're doing. So I think it's super important that you surround yourself with others who are similar, who are doing similar things with similar goals if you're really wanting to transition because when you go back into the corporate environment or your work environment, they're talking about, you know, punching a the clock. They're talking about asking the boss you know, what time they have to be in, what's the next project. And there is no boss when you're self-employed. You are the boss, right? So you're the person that you're having a meeting with. And um, it's important to surround yourself with people who are doing the same thing. If you've never been in an entrepreneurial environment, I think it's major. Um, it's a major advantage for you to fast track your um, your side hustle in, into a real business that's earning income and revenue for you now I shared before some people don't necessarily want to go into full-time entrepreneurship they want to add another thirty forty thousand dollars a year on to their income from their side hustle I get it I get it but the consistency in the income is what's important and that means that you will have to have a process and systems in order um, to make that happen let's see I wrote down some other stuff for you guys here are some of the fears so I wanted to talk about some of the reasons why I think people never move into really turning their side hustle into a business. And I believe a lot of it is fear-based. So fear of failure. You're gonna, As an entrepreneur, you're going to have to get over the fear of failure because everything that you do is not going to work in that moment, not the way that you desire it to. But what is going to work is your capa your level of capacity to do it because you're going to be improving um, your skills and your knowledge and your understanding. And you're going to learn things from some of the mistakes that you're going to make along the way. But you have to remove the fear of failure. Um, also, the fear of taking risks. I know if you're working a job, you get a paycheck. It's automatic. You, as long as you sign, show up, go to work, do what you're supposed to do, you've been accustomed to getting a paycheck. And so a lot of times the risk factor for uh, those who have worked the job is really, really low. Like there's a fear about actually showing up for yourself. That's what I, entrepreneurship is definitely showing up for yourself and you creating a future that you desire and it not being determined by necessarily someone that you work for where you have income caps, certain time to be there, all that other stuff. And so you have to remove the um, the fear of taking risk. Now, does it ever leave? It, it does at certain levels, but when you're growing your business and you want to go to a new level, or maybe for you, rebranding is, you know, what you're needing to do. So maybe you have a business and you've been treating it like a hobby. And so rebranding for you may feel like taking a risk because it makes you step outside of your comfort zone. The fear of financial woes. One of the ways that we can reduce fear is through information. That's one of the ways to reduce fear is to have knowledge on what to do. And so fear of financial woes, how you eliminate that one, I gave you um, a track to be able to go and look at what is it that I owe out every single month to take care of my family, it, even if it's the bare minimum or, you know, pick that amount that it is that you need and then find out what that process is going to be that produces consistent revenue. And then once you get to the space where your business is doing that, the fear of the financial woe starts to <clears throat> dissipate. But you can eliminate some of those fears through awareness. So information removes fear. Understanding, knowledge, how to, it removes fear. And so if you're wondering why you're so afraid, it simply could be because you don't have the information. You, you don't know what to do, right? And we've all been there. Whatever your next level is or next step, you only know what you know. And so you can eliminate some of the fear of financial woes uh, by getting the right information and, and being informed about your next move. And then fear of what people think. Lord have mercy. This is a big one. Again, if you're stepping out to do something entrepreneurial and you've been working a job and everybody around you has been working a job, there is often a fear that people are going to think what you're doing is weird. 
they, they are going to think that what you're doing is weird. They're not going to think that it's any stability to it. You know, they're, they're going to think you're taking risks. You're doing all of the things that most people are unwilling to do. But entrepreneurs are probably some of the bravest people on the planet, I feel. When I looked at the fact that I have been earning my own revenue for 28, 29 years, I, I was like, whoa, you know, I, I had a, a job where I was depending on a business or a company since my first, uh, what, five years in, in my entrepreneurial pursuit. And so it is a very noble thing to do. And there are mindsets that you have to move outside of because most people don't take that gift, that thing, that superpower that they're really, really good at. They don't even think it's monetizable because they do it so easy, right? It comes natural to them. This was actually one of the people I spoke with for consultation last week, they were like, I didn't even think about that. And I was like, yeah, that's your superpower. And if you look back on it, that's what people are asking you for help with. And it, she said, I never would have thought of it because I just do that naturally. I was like, it's monetizable, let's monetize it, right? So we created the strategies for her um, to be able to do that. So getting over the fear of what people are going to think. One of the things, that has been consistent uh, for me is not always having everyone agree with what it is that I'm doing because I understand that every time you take a step of growth, you are now doing something outside of the normalcy of what everybody around you is doing. So other people are looking at you, you know, like you're weird, but you're, you're really just betting on yourself. And you have to, um, this goes back to what I shared before about making a commitment that you are going to make this work. You're going to figure out how um, to make this work and that you're committed to the process. So some of you may be doing things already in the community and you want to expand online. Um, some of you don't know where to start. Uh, some of you just simply want to up level what it is that you're doing so you're earning more consistent revenue. I have two opportunities for you. One is inside my 3D Success Academy and um, it is a year-long opportunity. However, there are um, monthly options to join. So you do have to commit to at least three months and after that, if you found that you didn't get um, as far as you thought you would, or I don't know why you would even think that because it's like so packed with results-driven information. But if you find that it, you're, you don't want to get any more value from the academy, you can unsubscribe after or you can, you know, stop after the you've committed to the three months. And then there is an option for you to pay... Uh, a one-time fee and that fee is tremendously um, it's, it's one of the best options to look at it because you actually have an opportunity to have a huge savings on you know the um, tuition for the Academy but I left the link at the top of the page and what I'm gonna do this evening at 830 I am going to have a Q&A so for those of you who have a side hustle and you have some questions, you just don't know where to go, um, I have a group. If you look at the top of this, there is a bit.ly link. I think it's bit.ly slash grow my SHB. I'm going to be inside that group. Um, and I just opened the group up because I said I'm going to do Q&A this evening for those of you who have a side hustle and you just have some questions about the process and what it's going to take and um, what your next move may need to be in order for you to start earning consistent revenue. I'm going to do a Q&A inside that group. You can click the link at the top of the post and I'll come back and put the um, links inside this uh, broadcast. Does anyone have any questions for now about turning your side hustle into a business. I hope I've given you guys some meat, some something to really think about and consider. Again, I share that I think entrepreneurship is a noble thing to do for your family. I think the ability to be able to earn your own revenue is an important skill set to have. I believe that entrepreneurship is probably one of the biggest growth tracks for your personal life as well because as your business grows, you grow personally and you increase your 
value um, in the world, in the marketplace, and your impact. But it also uh, removes that income cap that comes with you know working a job and working for someone else. I love to support you if you are a female entrepreneur who has a side hustle you want to turn into a business and you want to know how to brand it, um, create collaborations that multiply your efforts and your income, you want to create more brand awareness, I'd love for you to join us inside our academy. The 26th of February is the last day for this particular enrollment. Um, also, the option to pay weekly will leave um, it, it is not an option that will always be available. So for those of you who are looking to um, really get serious and be in an incubator and um, earn some more revenue, get a process and a system that is consistent where you can actually measure and say, hey, you know, I, I really think that this is something that I'm able to do as a measure of income in my life for my family. Some people go to a job they don't love every single day, but they go because they don't have an option. But I'm here to tell you that you do have an option. Um, if you have an expertise or an idea that you want to monetize, I'd love to support you in doing that inside 3D Success Academy for women. Opportunity not only to grow your business, but to grow your life. You guys have a super, super amazing day. Step into entrepreneurship. I believe being able to create income when you need to is an important skill set to have.